What's going on guys? It's Cameron from Tinker's Musings here. Today we're going to be talking about an interesting network appliance, the Rocade ICX6610. It is a beast, or as some call it, a beef chunk. Um, so let's get into it and let's see what this thing can do. All right, so the Brocade ICX6610 is quite the network switch because it offers a variety of ports. It's referred to commonly on the serve the home thread uh, by Fodisha as the Beef King. And I have to agree because we have technically eight SFP plus ports here, but then they also say that if you use two of the breakout ports on the back, two of the 40 gigabit ports and break out to 10 gigabits, you have an additional eight. So you could have up to 16 SFP plus 10 gigabit connections through this switch. And then each of these is either PoE or not PoE, depending on the model that you buy. I actually got the PoE 48 port switch if you get the 24 port configuration, it's going to be a bit different. You'll have uh, you'll have these not stacked, but instead they'll be side by side, and you only have like half the ports on the front. Now, the thing that's really nice about this is that you can actually set it up as a switch that handles all of your networking needs essentially, and. I've got it configured using a single subnet. Of course, you can go more advanced and you know set up these different VLANs if you if you like to split up your network. I may be doing that at some point in the future, but if you want to configure it as sort of a no fuss, no hassle switch, the easiest way is to jump into Fedisha's guide, flash the firmware as suggested, and just go with it. And basically, you're going to need a serial port, and most likely you're using a modern PC. So go ahead and get a USB to RJ45 sort of cable. Now, the RJ45 is going to look like Ethernet. It pretty much is the same size. If you have cables that are more like a phone jack size, then that's not going to be the correct type of cable. This is just a generic, compatible Cisco console cable. Get one that's plenty long because you're going to want to not be tethered to your PC. I had set this up here in my office before deploying it to my rack. And they recommend using PuTTY. I actually used a different terminal tool. Your mileage may vary. It just depends on what you're most comfortable with. Um... You do need to connect the back with the management port and that that is the Ethernet port next to the console port on the back. Once you do that, you assign us an IP on your network and then you can copy over some of the update files. First, you update the bootloader and then we can update the OS. Finally, you would do a reset and then you'd be able to go in to set up the rest of it. I'm not going to go into like the step by steps of this guide in this video today, but I will link this in the description below. When you're done with this guide, you will have configured this switch to use a static IP on your network and you won't be using the management port on the back because it'll, it'll um, transition to using the front side. More like an unmanaged switch where you just plug into any of this, the ports with your active network connection and then that begins switching on that port and makes everything else, it assigns an IP address to everything else on the switch. So once you're done with the setup here, You'll have a, anywhere from 24 to 48 ports available to you for one gigabit. And if you've 
picked the PoE configuration, then they'll all be PoE enabled. Note that the PoE version does draw more watts, and it will draw that wattage no matter what, even if you're not using them as PoE. Just keep that in mind. Back here on the serve the home thread, I think that it was like 110 watts. Not too bad. It's about the same as an R710. Not not very loud at all. And I actually took some footage of myself in the garage, which I'll be putting in towards the end of this video. Okay, so once you've configured using Fodisha's guide, part of it enables the web interface. The web interface leaves something to be desired. It's, it's really basic. I wouldn't recommend spending too much time in here. You probably would want to, to use more of the CLI. One thing that is interesting is that you can come here and see which ports are active. And I believe this port here is connected to 40 gigabits. That's one of the servers in my rack. These all should be 40 gigabit capable. It's these two ports here that are breakout capable. So if you don't need all 40 gigabits, all four of these 40 gigabit ports, then you can use these two as 10, 4 by 10 breakouts as well. So you get an additional eight SFP plus ports. One thing to note, and you'll find that during the guide, it goes through installing licenses for these ports to activate them as 10 gigabits. Out of the box, they are one gigabit SFP. And it's not that big of a deal. It basically, you're changing the serial number on your device and you can re revert that if you're gonna sell it. And I'm not even sure if you can get licenses for these machines anymore. So I don't feel too bad about switching the license and doing it like this. I'm just using it for my home lab as well. Once you get your switch set up and it's on your network, you want to enable SSH because then any of these commands can be done over SSH. You won't need to use the serial port anymore, which is nice. And then this is just uh, how it covers the 40 gigabits on the back. I guess I lucked out because mine really doesn't stick over any of the other running equipment in the rack. It's no louder than my DL380P G8 or the disc shelves that I have running currently. So I'm actually recording from my garage right now with the servers, disc shelves and everything on. The sound is not too bad. The switch barely adds any volume to the rest of everything. So it is very, very usable. On the front here, we have eight SFP plus ports and 48 PoE one gigabit ports. All right, and then on the back, this is what you'll see. You have two power supplies, and both of these can actually be run at 120 or 240 volts, anywhere between that. I currently have them running at 208, just a single power supply. And this is the seller that I bought from. These are selling quickly, so if you're interested in buying from the seller, I will leave it a link down below. Please let me know if you have any questions about how this works. Uh, but it did come with the rack ears, so you can mount these directly in your rack. I will say that because it's pretty long, it's, it is going to have a little bit of sag. Maybe there is some rack support that we could get. It's a 1U configuration. If you put it right above some other equipment, it probably won't sag. I have about one, one U in between my last server and this. Haven't decided if I'm gonna put like a patch panel there or not um, to organize a bit better. Basically, I have everything running underneath to the back for all the servers, but I may actually get a nicer 
patch panel so that I can run smaller cables and kind of hide that wrap around. So that's pretty much it. Submit your best offer on this and then you'll be in the game for one gigabit, 10, and even 40 if you're interested. I like this switch. I think it's going to serve me well. I'm using it more as, say, an unmanaged switch right now but there's totally more you can do with this from the software side. I'm not a network engineer, so I don't know everything about the capabilities necessarily. I just know that it is a cheap barrier to entry to get many, many different link speeds on your network and even dip your tail in the water for 40 gigabits. So that'll do it for this video, guys. I hope you enjoyed, and if you would like, to leave a comment please do let me know how you're going to use this in your setup or if you have a similar switch please remember to like and subscribe and hit that bell icon to be notified of the next video all right well that'll do for now thanks guys we'll see you next time